for another Transformers review. And last week, I know I said if I feel better this week, I was going to do Grimlock. And I do feel better. But in my sickness, I forgot that I have company coming this week. And I have about 30 minutes to shoot and edit the uh, video for this week. And frankly, I don't think we're going to be able to fit Grimlock in that. And he definitely deserves time as one of my favorite uh, masterpieces. So I figured we'd look at something else that I got pretty recently instead. And today we're going to look at the X-Transbots Glider slash Air Robot. And uh, <clears throat> this is actually the X-Trans Robot. I believe it's in just a knockoff of the Jizai Toys uh, Power Glide, which was actually an official Transformer toy because um, Jizai licensed it. And so, yeah, X-Transbots basically ripped it off. This is the box. It says, stop me. To stop me, you have to catch me first. Nothing very good on the side. It does say that preparing Tyrant 3 for X3. This is X1. I'm not sure what X2 is. Uh, might be Devastator parts, to be honest. So I suppose a Galvatron is coming. On the back here, you see that there's some stats here. Uh, with some broken English in some places, such as weakness saying, Sometimes be tracked because of his overconfident flying. It's a choking hazard. And it says open. To which you get not a very impressive display, to be completely honest. Um, yeah, so let's open it up and let's take a look inside. Inside the box we had a little baggie. And inside the little baggie is of course the cards that they really love to put every third party company does. That shows actual pictures of, uh, from the G1 TV show with Moon Honey and Girlfriend. Interesting. You also get the instructions, which are actually not for Power Glide, uh, but for the Wild Child, which I'm not sure who that's supposed to be, who has the key slogan of Violence Keeps Me Alive. Which I argue is not the case. Most of the time, violence will make you dead. But anyway, these are the worst instructions ever. Uh, they're, they're just not clear at all on what you're supposed to do. So we're just going to disregard these. They also come with some accessories here. Which are just molded white pieces of plastic. Uh, two blasters. You'll notice the one still has the piece of the sprue on it. And remember that time when... Power Glide got in the knife fight. I don't either, but you get a knife with them too, because what figure is not better with a knife? And then there's, of course, Power Glide himself. Now, I gotta say, I was impressed on the size of this toy. I really thought it was going to be smaller. Um, he does have some landing gear here that is almost impossible to get out through the bottom here. I'll pull it out. And let's just set him here. As you can see, it goes in and retracts really, really, really easily. And the back one's almost useless because he's kind of sitting on his arms. But to show you the size, here is the one that came out with Dark as a Moon. And here's the G1 toy. So he's a lot bigger than I was expecting him to be. But my enjoyment of him waned a little. It's The color is off. It's too bright of a red, frankly. Uh, the G1 toy is a little more dark, and this is actually the preferable color in my opinion. Your mileage may vary. You can see that they had no scruples about just flat out taking the Autobot logo, which most third party companies don't do. You also notice the other problem is that while this piece here is supposed to slot in, it doesn't really hold very well, making him, you know, kind of, you know, you can see right through him, things don't really hold together, which is kind of a, a, a tick off in my book that he's not quite as good as I would hope for. But overall, he's a fairly faithful rendition of the Power Glide plane. So, there's really not much more to say about this. Um, you can see that things just kind of want to move on me. So let's go ahead and just start working him into his robot mode. 
And of course you have an exposed face, but what are you going to do, I suppose, with this power glide? Of course, the Dark of the Moon one doesn't do it. So, first we'll fold in all this landing gear here. And then the next thing we'll do is you'll open the top hatch here. And there's actually a heart inside there. I don't know if that's going to be visible. You can see it kind of. Uh, I believe that is the symbol that it is a Jizai toy. Um, and they just never got rid of it because they just took the design. So anyway, you open this on up and you can split the bottom here and open this. Now it says in the instructions you can store your gun but there's a little hole in there. I don't know if they're intending it to plug in, but it's far. the post is far too big for that, and this gun won't fit at all. This gun, on the other hand, let's break it off this little screw piece here. And let's see. If we put it in, nope, it doesn't fit either. So the instructions are wrong in that regard. I suppose... We could take the knife, we'll break this little piece of the screw off, and we could put the knife in there, and that'll fit in if you really wanted to, but the instructions clearly, clearly on step five are showing this gun inside him, and that doesn't work at all. This is why the instructions are horrible. So let's get back to Power Glide, who's looking like a mangled mess right now. Now that we have this split apart, what you're gonna do is kind of flip the head side, flip the head sideways like this. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to have it off camera. Then take your finger, move the bottom cockpit here, which exposes another Autobot symbol, and flip it around, and then push that in. Then you can finish flipping the head. Close, oops, you have to close up this bottom piece then close the top. There's a little tab inside preventing you from doing that. So now once you get here, you kind of bring out the side pieces and you'll see that it's going to form the lower part here as you put them in. You can then flip these arms on up and again the common complaint is most things here just don't peg in in any way shape or form and that's my hugest complaint about this toy then we'll take these little wing assemblies and bring them down like this and this part here I do find rather interesting so you take this piece rotate it on out and then flip it over it's on a, a, a swivel there then you're gonna take this open it on up and bring it on around and you'll see that we have it like this and then what you're going to do is fold this on in and cap this closed again and then just keep swiveling his legs so it's on the outside and you'll see that his legs look pretty nice actually on the bottom now if you follow the instructions on what it's telling you to do it took me a while to figure out why mine didn't exactly look right because the instructions lead you to do something like that and I was like what is going on with this toy I'm not liking this power glide at all but then I just started kind of fiddling with it and that's how I realized the proper way that he's supposed to transform so once you got that you fold out his arms like you would the generation one and then swivel his lower part of his arm like that swivel it and then swivel there at the elbow joint and there you've got a power glide and again the same problem persists that nothing really pegs in and it's very apparent when you try to mess with his legs and the articulation is pretty lacking on this guy to be entirely honest as a garage kit maker, whoops, I had his leg the wrong way. As a garage kit maker, which is where he, er, from a garage kit maker, which is where he originally came from, he's not too bad. But if you're just gonna knock off the design and mass produce it, eh, I frankly feel the price tag for him is a little bit high. Um, especially for the fact that the colors just don't look right. I don't like 
the white at all. It really needs to be silver. Uh, articulation, you have a ball joint up here, so you get a full range of motion there, but don't be surprised if you're doing something and it pops right off because there's some burrs on the ball joint here from where it came off a sprue that weren't sanded down. And this arm tends to pop off a lot. Uh, you do have the ball joint at the elbow, which gives you the forward back and some in and out, which is nice. But it's a little bit ruined by the fact that his hand is hollow due to transformation. For the legs, you do have this little like skirt armor basically, which moves forward that much. So with that, that lets you move the leg forward that much. Out to the side, you get about that much. So you're not getting a whole wide variety of poses out of him. And finally, you do have the knee of course. And with the, the foot being on the ball joint, you can spin the foot around and go up and down. Unfortunately, next to no side to side tilt on it. Oh, there we go. There goes the arm again. When he comes to his accessories, you can hold them off, of course. Uh, there's the one pistol. It's cool. I like having some accessories. They'll fit in on a classic shelf. This gun here is the hardest one to fit in. It really doesn't want to fit in very well. And it's because the hole's not, you know, terribly well formed. So you kind of have to put it in at a little bit of an angle and then twist it in position. But he can hold it nonetheless. And might as well show the knife. Unfortunately, he cannot hold the knife the proper way by his hand, which would be underneath. So, I don't know. He's only got a strength of three and an intelligence of, what's it say? Seven? You would think he'd understand how to use the knife with such high intelligence. Oh, he does have a swivel at the knee too, so you can kind of pose his feet a little bit nicer. So since we've got him in his robot mode, we might as well take a look at him with some other incarnations. Again, here's the Dark of the Moon version here. So you can see the size difference, and again the G1. Clearly, this power glide has a much more Generation 1 aesthetic going on, as it almost perfectly models the G1 toy uh, with just a little bit better legs going on. Um, in fact, the arm articulation is almost identical. If this had a ball joint on this lower piece here, you would have pretty well the same arms in terms of what you can do with it. Um, the head actually has exactly the same articulation. Uh, this one's obviously the much better articulated toy. Of course, you have pieces in the way. And he is the much cheaper toy at $6.00. But, it really depends what you want to do with the display. Uh, if you're looking to put him on a classic shelf, he's a pretty good fit. For instance, let's bring his other mini bot companion, uh, Warpath here. And you can see that, yes, Warpath as a deluxe is still bigger. But, you know, Power Glide fits the bill of a classics Power Glide a lot better. Now. Like I said, I do have a problem with the colors, uh, for instance, the face being white as opposed to either a darker gray or a silver, which I prefer. Um, that can really be taken care of in paint, though, if you so choose. Do I recommend this guy? I don't know. Depends how big of a fan of Power Glide you are and how good of a price you can get him for. Um, I know getting him from KO Toys when they were still around was running around 50 bucks or so, I believe. And that's too much to spend for this guy, frankly. Um, I don't know. I know Robot Kingdom, I saw, had him on sale or at least on a pre-order to get him back for 40 uh, yeah, I probably would assume you'd have to factor at least $10 to get him in the U.S. 
So again, you're looking at 50, and I just feel that's too high because nothing pegs in solidly. Um, he's okay, just not fantastic. If you like your mini bots mini, I take go with the Dark of the Moon version. If you're looking for something more like this, then I guess he's worth it. I managed to snag him for about 30 on eBay shipped, uh, so I got lucky. Um, even then, I don't know, some of the little things like just nothing holding together, you, just, you know, I was very disappointing in that sense, but I could have paid more for him, I suppose. Um, my opinion could be different if I was a Power Glide fan, but and frankly, he's about one of the least favorite mini bots of mine, aside from Wheelie. So, I'm not really sure what to tell you. <laughs> so, he's okay. He's not perfect. You know what I just noticed? I don't know if Power Glide from the TV show had the silver dot on his head. Did they put the silver dot on his head just to show where the screw would be, perhaps? So to recap, my pros and cons, the pros are, he's bigger than I expected. Uh, he's got some interesting transformation features, but since nothing really pegs together, he's left feeling just not very good. Um, for the price, I don't necessarily like him, especially when you compare him to some of the other third party releases that are not stealing somebody else's design, that nail characters. Um, I think that this guy is a pass in most cases, unless you are a Power Glide fan, because there's just too many little flaws, like whatever is going on with the plastic here, mismatch of color, the wobbliness, the joints that just pop right off. So, anyway. This is T2RX6, and this was a look at the x Transbots glider. I hope you guys enjoyed the review, and next week, I promise, Master Keith Grimlock. See you guys.